Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Good morning, football gods. And hello, Stuart Morrison. We definitely need all of you guys shining down on the Dallas Cowboys. If you take a look down here, we got four days, eight hours, four, eight hours, four minutes, and 25 seconds until kickoff against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't know about you, you know, it, it's been crazy, it's, it's crazy in my mind, the amount of depression, the amount of disgust, the amount of negativity for the Dallas Cowboys that at least have an opportunity. Because here's the thing I said all along, I always say, there are 17 weeks to prove that you are one of those teams one of those 14 teams that deserve the right to play in the playoffs for the ultimate prize. That's the truth. And during that time, you have highs and lows. You have good games and bad games. You have the perfect game, and then you have shitty games. But collectively is what you have. And I am amazed at how many People have this defeatist attitude, this defeatist attitude. We have problems on our team. We've had injuries. We've had questionable coaching. But there's not a team out there that is perfect. There's not a team out there that's perfect. Not a single one. It's really on any given Sunday. Sometimes it's how the ball bounces. But you go into this thing with the best game plan you can, get the best 11 on each side of the roster playing, and you roll the dice. And everybody has a chance. We do not know the outcome unless, of course, it's scripted, <laughs> which is a possibility. But we still don't know the outcome. Maybe the people who are scripting it know, but we don't. And I'm going to enjoy this time. In the same way as when the Cowboys lost to Tampa Bay, Dak Prescott got hurt, I said I'd rather have football, win or lose, than no football. I'd rather be in the playoffs, even if we do lose to Tampa Bay, than not being in the playoffs at all. Because we've already done more than what these talking heads have said we could do. We have. Now, program note here. I may have accused the wrong person of this scheme. You know, there's always schemes. You know, you got the uh, the, 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 the porn uh, bots that are always doing stuff. Then we have the NFL bots that would come on. Now it's a new scheme that's out there where it looks like your profile picture and that you're communicating to them to tell you to go to telegram.com. I talked to one person, I got a couple of emails yesterday and said, was this you? Because it looked like your profile picture, but it wasn't me. That got emails that said, you know, thanks for being a fan and all that. Get your prize. And I talked to one person who said this happened to him on a Scooter Magruder video where it was Scooter Magruder's picture and he thought he'd won a PlayStation uh, system and he had to send the money for the shipping. Sent the money for the shipping, of course, and never got the, the, the PlayStation. So be careful. There's always so many different schemes. It used to be the IRS ones where they call and say that, that we're about to take you to court and, and everything else. They, the IRS isn't going to call you. They're just going to do the shit that they're going to do to you and then let you know we garnished your wages. They ain't taking you to court, and they certainly aren't going to give you a courtesy call. Okay? And so if you get a message from me, let me clarify the only place, there's only two places I will ever say to go. One would be my community tab because you are new, now a new channel member. And there's a link in there that only members can see. 
So that way you can go to our Thrive site. We can go ahead and get you your shot glass or your racks or, or the squeeze football, whatever it is for the level that you are. Or I will say, email me cowboysmark94 at gmail. I ain't sending no telegram stuff. I ain't putting no emojis in any comments or anything. I ain't got that kind of time or knowledge of, of technology. Okay. Also tonight, tonight we'll be doing a live stream with my three sons. Philly 500, Cop Pizzle. Yes, Cop Pizzle. The wayward son. And a little, little Rio. So we'll go through. I have no idea what the subject's going to be. Rio's leading it, and his team's the only one that's not in the playoffs. So I can't tell you what it's going to be, but it's going to be tonight. So we will see you there. Come hell or high water, we'll be there. All right, so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers seem like their high point of the season was beating the Cowboys, and everybody thought Tampa Bay is going to be back. Tampa Bay with Tom Brady is going to be a juggernaut. Tampa Bay's defense is going to be hellacious. But it ended up being not so good of a season. They've had a multitude of injuries. They've had... Players that just seem to have gotten old. And that's the problem with um, doing what they did. Is when you end up getting a lot of free agents, you know, guys that are fifth-year players, that are high-salary guys. It's good for the short term, but the problem is, is there's not necessarily staying power. You can see that same effect that happened with the Rams. It just happened quicker. Tampa Bay going into season was one of the oldest, if not the oldest, roster in the NFL. And when you get older, you don't get better. You end up taking longer to recover. You end up getting hurt easier. Those, those injuries that you have end up coming back more often. So those are the problems that Tampa Bay has had. So from the standpoint of that team, they're not the same team. They're not the same team. And they started out the season healthy against us. If you go through with Tampa Bay, and we're going to take a peek over here, Tampa Bay, as far as their offensive ranking, their offensive ranking is 25th. And that's with Tom Brady. I want you to think about that for a second. 25th. The Washington Commanders, who've had Carson Wentz, um, Heineke playing, and uh, damn, can't think of the rookie that just started. Average a half a point more than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Chicago Bears average almost a full point than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this be it, in a division that was not good. They had the Carolina Panthers, they had the Atlanta Falcons, and they had the New Orleans Saints. Clearly, it was not a good year for Tampa Bay. So, defensively, defensively, let's look at the numbers there. Tampa Bay's defense was better, but through the course of the season has gotten worse. They actually ranked out at 13, giving up 21.1 points a game. But they are not the same defense that smothered people like before. So, yes, you've got the GOAT. Yes, he can always still play. He is going to elevate that team. But is it enough? Now, Kellen Moore, oh, boy. Kellen Moore. Who wants some more Kellen Moore? Kellen Moore, his comment is, as offensive coordinator, we just have to be more efficient on first and second down in the run game. It doesn't have to be 20-yard runs. It just has to be more efficient and allow the passing game to make completions and find different opportunities. That's where you can't have a penalty on first down running the football, and now it's first and 15. That means you can't have, you know, a two-yard loss where it's second and 12. 
that means you need to get four or five yards where it's second down and six or second down and five. I agree with that. But what we also have to do, and if you were talking about doing this, and it seems like we've gotten away from doing more of it, and this feels like last year, last year when we were in the playoffs, it seemed like 12 personnel was like, who's that? Who's that 12 personnel? And running the football, what's, what, what's that? We rushed for 77 yards. We hardly touched 12 personnel. When the Cowboys have been in 12 personnel, they have been more dynamic because they have young tight ends that can actually catch the football. They have young tight ends that can block. They need to use that. And once they can start getting a few yards running the football, which will slow down getting the Tampa Bay offense on the field, then you can start doing play action. You can start doing the bootlegs. You can start moving the ball around and hitting your receivers. And by the way, I, I posted on Twitter yesterday the clip from uh, The Replacements, Clifford Franklin, where they ended up putting all the stick on his hands. Unfortunately, we can't put stick on Noah Brown's hands. It's not legal anymore. But I hope we're not looking at Noah Brown being the focal point of the offense like it was last week. I don't know if that was intentional. I don't know if the Washington commander said, we're going to try and take away C.D. Lamb and we're going to force you to go to Noah Brown. But if Noah Brown is the focal point, man, come on, man. This is a game that you got to get T.Y. Hilton going and you got to use C.D. Lamb. That's your horses. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If we are in crucial downs going to Noah Brown, then, then Kellen Moore needs to be fired at halftime. Just do now, of course, the experts out there, the experts out there have the Cowboys losing. Damian Woody is home with a voice, but we are going to smash helmets today in his honor. We'll take you through winners in every game. Now, usually on these Thursdays, I begin with bold predictions. I might look here or here or here, but hold everything. Cindy. Put the picks on the screen. Monday night, Whoa. everyone <laughs> but me has Dallas going one and done in these playoffs. Bartholomew, why are the Cowboys going to lose to Tampa Tom? I tell you what, because Tampa Tom is getting reinforcements. He's having his defensive line. They're healthy. And I just don't like the way that Dak Prescott is playing. He's turning the ball over. And in the playoffs, if you throw a pick six, it can be very, very costly. But the bigger story is who job is going to, is going to cost. Do you have to pick between Kellen Moore Mike McCarthy, or are you picking between Dan Quinn? Because if they lose, the mandate was deep in the playoffs. That's what Jerry Jones told us at the beginning of the season. And if they fall short, you're going to have to pick between one of those coordinators because they're going to have opportunities at head coaching jobs. Mike McCarthy is coaching for his life. I see. That's what I think, too. And Dan Graziano, let's be clear. Yes. Jerry Jones said on the radio the other yeah. day, a definitive no. Yes. So the question is Mike McCarthy coaching for his job. Now, the point I made on the radio yesterday is, this is the problem with the owner doing a radio interview every single week. What is he going to say? Oh, yes, I'm firing the coach if they lose on Monday. That's really not a question he can answer any other way, is it? No, right. He wasn't going to say that, right, he's coaching for his job right. this weekend. That would be unprecedented. Right. It would be awesome. Yes. But it would be unprecedented. <laughs> That's right. So, no, I, I think, but I, I do think we should put more stock into it than, than some people seem inclined to. Because when you look at Jerry's recent history, the year after year with Jason Garrett, right, he would say things like this, and it turned out to be true. The one year he kind of hemmed and hawed and said, well, we'll see at the end of the season. That was the year it turned out not to be. Uh, he turned out not to be safe. So I do think that I, I think if they lose Monday, especially if it looks bad, you know, I think there's a conversation that they have in the building. I don't know which way it goes. It's ultimately up to Jerry. He likes this coach. He wants this coach to succeed. And I, I think there's a conversation. But I, I, I do think we should put some stock into what Jerry said and take him at his word to at least some extent. Let me ask the question a little differently to you, Rob Ninkovich. I mean, it, it is worth saying out loud that the coach yeah. has won 12 games in consecutive seasons. So, I mean, there are a lot of coaches who have their jobs still coming off of seasons in which they haven't had nearly the success they've had in Dallas. In your mind, 
If Jerry Jones decides to make a change here, will that be fair? Will he? Will Mike McCarthy deserve to be out of a job? Sure, it's fair. If they lose in the first round of the playoffs, it is an epic failure for the Dallas Cowboys. You you think about this team and the way that they're built and, and what they have invested in their quarterback, in their running back, in their defense. They have to win this game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not a team that we looked at this whole season and said in the playoffs they're going to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So you look at the Dallas Cowboys the last couple of years. They're in the top of the league in penalties. Uh, you remember last year with the, with the time management issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've looked back at some of the clock management issues mm -hmm. before the half and after the game, and they're looking at the head coach. And then you look at Dak Prescott and turning the football over. And then even this year, they've had abilities to stop the run. They've had a hard, hard time stopping the run, the yep. defense that mm -hmm. we had so highly praised. So, again, if they lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mm -hmm. it would not be out of the question for me that they move on and look for a different head coach of this team. Here's the reality. When the offense plays well, Kellen Moore gets to praise. When the defense plays well, Dan Quinn gets to praise. Mm -hmm. When the team plays bad, Mike McCarthy gets all the blame. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the thing is, he's in a, in, a, in a situation where he can't win. And when you, we've seen Jerry pick the smart offensive coach. And that's where the game is going. And we know that Kellen Moore has already been interviewed yep. or is going to get interviewed Where's by the going? Carolina Panthers. It's Carolina, yeah. Yeah. So Jerry has done this before. He tried it already, right? He said he made Dan Quinn the highest paid assistant and one of the highest paid defensive coordinators because he understands his value. But the big elephant in the room is Sean Payton. Sean Payton's name is going to be rumored at every job opening there. Yeah. And you talk about a guy that already has admiration and respect, and he can say all he said in the offseason. But listen, the shadow and the, the, the elephant in the room is Sean Payton. And if Sean Payton is out there, or if Kellen Moore is somebody that you may lose, yeah. I don't know if Jerry has as much faith in Mike McCarthy as those other Quickly, because I think Nick mm -hmm. agrees. I think elevating Quinn or, or Moore is more likely than Payton. Remember, the Cowboy coaching job is... Oh, don't don't say in right? Vel... It's not someone who has a lot of personnel control. It's not someone who can be the star of the show. That's going to be Jerry. So Mike McCarthy kind of fits. And if anyone knows that, Sean Payton knows it. He was there. I remind everyone who doesn't know, Sean Payton was there under Bill Parcells. Oh, don't say this that. This is in the Cowboys' hands to yeah. protect Mike McCarthy's job here. They just have to win. Yeah. And if they go into the playoffs mm -hmm. and they win. Just win, baby. And they get to a, an NFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy's still the head coach there. Sure. I'm talking about if he loses against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Understood. Now, Badly. You, you just said the NFC Championship game. A, a win on Monday night would guarantee them, barring a, an, an upset that no one sees coming by Seattle this weekend, either a date in Philadelphia or San Francisco. Yep. You think he's got to win that game, too, in order to keep his job? We're talking about beating Tampa is one thing. I think so. Beating the Eagles or the Niners on the road is something else I, entirely. I think that he has to get to a championship-level game. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking the mm -hmm. NFC championship yep. that decides who's going to a Super Bowl. Jerry Jones has stated in the past few years that – he wants to get back to those games. Yeah. He wants to be in those championship football games, and he is spending a lot of money to get to those championship football games. All right, so we will have more is of the game as we go, including a little later this hour. We will analyze what it I mean, in comparison to, say, you know, the Denver Broncos, where they got Russell Wilson and um, Randy Gregory, as, say, the, the Rams that just signed everybody, um, you know, here's what I will say. In the beginning of the season, when we heard Stephen Jones say, we don't believe it's the right way to build a team but through free agents, we've seen teams win the Super Bowl doing that. We saw Tampa Bay going out and signing Tom Brady and everybody else along with them, and they won. We saw the Rams do the same thing. The problem with it, and we even saw the Eagles do that as well in 2017. The problem with that is, is it's right now. And you look, and all of a sudden, you're going to have to rebuild. You've got Sean McVay, who's contemplating retiring because he realizes, yeah, we won the Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford is, is injury prone now. He, he may be spent. You've got a lot of big contracts. You don't have high draft picks. And now it's the process of really having to retool and rebuild, and that's a couple years in the building. You don't have the number one picks to trade for all the players that you want. 
And that's where Tampa Bay kind of is now. It's where, you know, Bruce Arians kind of retires. Okay, I'm not here to try and do the rebuild. You've got a quarterback who's 45, uh, along with the rest of the roster that's aging. And you start looking at that and saying, yeah, Tampa Bay, they're in the playoffs this year. But do you look and say Tampa Bay is going to be a juggernaut next year? Tom Brady may be leaving, and who's going to be the quarterback? So from the standpoint of the Cowboys versus those teams, I don't know if we win the Super Bowl or not. But you look at it and say, this is the, was going into the season the third youngest team in the NFL. You looked at this team and you said, you've got a Micah Parsons that's only in his second year. You got a Diggs that's only in his third year. You got a CeeDee Lamb that's only in his third year. You have a quarterback who's not 45 or 39 like Aaron Rodgers, who's still relatively young. Your oldest offensive lineman are Jason Peters, a guy you picked up, and Tyron Smith. And so you start looking at this and saying, for the next couple of years, this team has pieces where it's not starting all over. And so that's where you have to give credit where credit is due. Um, and for them to say the Cowboys have invested a lot of money in this team, in comparison, they really haven't. But we'll see what happens on Monday night. We see that the talking heads, of course, like they always do, pick against the Cowboys. And in the meantime, it's time for me to go to work in the workshop. I got a lot of stuff to get out to you guys, and I appreciate each and every one of you, as always, for being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Look for our live stream tonight, and let's roll out of here. Our folks here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. I'm going to say it.